Welcome, everyone, to today's episode of Getting In, a College Coach Conversation. I'm Sally Ganga from College Coach. Um, we're continuing with our niche college series, and I'm lucky enough to talk to Sarah Beauforting, uh, Director of Admissions of Embry-Riddle Aeronautical Institute. And then after that, I'll be speaking with Joy Brown, Senior Director of Admission at George Fox College. Joy also worked at and attended Pepperdine University, so I will ask her a few questions about Christian colleges in general. And last, I'll be talking with Dan Combs, a college coach finance expert, about all the paperwork parents need to complete when their student goes to college. But for this first segment, I'm talking with Sarah. Welcome, Sarah. Hi, thanks for having me. Thanks so much for joining. And um, I realize I should have asked you how to pronounce your name. I hope I got it somewhat right. You were very close. It's Bofferding. Bofferding. So not <laughs> yeah. Bofferding, but Bofferding. Okay, that Correct. makes sense with the double F. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Well, um, so I want to like dig right in. I mean, I've always been kind of interested in finding out more about Embry-Riddle. It was not a college I would have looked at. I was a history major. It was, you know, not interested in aeronautics beyond just how planes could get me where I wanted to go. <laughs> um, but thank goodness there are institutes like that out there. So I was wondering if you could sort of say, what is Embry-Riddle? Like, let's just start with the basics. Absolutely. So um, Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, we're a private institution. Um, we actually have two residential campuses. So I'm at the campus here in Prescott, Arizona, and we have another campus in Daytona Beach, Florida. There's also a third entity of Embry-Riddle, which is our online worldwide campus. So um, lots of different modalities for our students, but we specialize in aviation, aerospace, security and intelligence education. So lots of people know us if they want to be a pilot or they want to be an astronaut or they want to be a rocket scientist. Um, but as mentioned, we've got a lot of other degrees. We've got degree programs in global security. Um, and cyber intelligence, which can lead students to career paths with the FBI and the CIA. Um, we've got anything that kind of relates to aviation and aerospace with astronomy, air traffic control, um, computer engineering, electrical engineering, um, all sorts of great offerings there. And all of our programs are four-year programs and we have graduate degrees as well. Okay. Yeah. I think I saw like business as well, like yes. the business of kind of flight, Absolutely. Um, which is, I think, important because it's always good to be well-rounded, but I, I do, whenever I think about STEM schools, mm -hmm. think about what happens if that student's in those hardcore physics and engineering courses and go, this isn't for me. Right. Like it's good. So there are other options there. It seems There absolutely are. So with the business side of things, that's kind of a new realm for us at Embry-Riddle, but we've got aviation business to kind of lead students to working for an airline or working for an airport or an aviation-based company, but then we've also got global business and supply chain management. Um, we've got a forensic accounting and fraud examination degree. So we're kind of branching into some of those fields as well, because you're absolutely right. They might come into us gung-ho thinking they want to be an engineer and then realizing, gosh, that's a lot of calculus and a lot of physics but I still kind of like aviation and aerospace. So it allows for them to transition. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's interesting that you have two campuses. I mean, if people want warm weather, you guys have it covered. Like that we do. Is, you're <laughs> and like sunshine. Your yes. <laughs> yeah. Warm weather and sunshine. You are all set. So tell me about the two campuses. I'm kind of curious about the history behind that. Yeah. So Embry-Riddle, um, the, the campus that it started out with our Daytona Beach, Florida campus. Um, that's our larger campus. We've got about 7,000 students out there. And then for our campus here in Prescott, we opened it up in the mid 70s. Um, and we've got about 3,000, 3,100 students here. So relatively small, smaller universities in the whole senses of college and university. But again, that kind of goes in with our niche and the programs that we offer. Um, we share the same degree programs that Ember Riddle is known for at our two residential campuses. So like the flight degree, the engineering degrees, and then there are some specialties per campus. So I mentioned the cyber intel and the global security. Those are unique to our campus here in Arizona. Um, and then our campus in Florida has more of the graduate programs that the university does have to offer. So you really do have, I mean, cybersecurity, obviously computer science is, is mm -hmm. like if students want to go into computer science, but like with that cybersecurity focus. Yes. You're, you must be a very good place. And I'm just going to put, I have a friend who used to work at IBM and now is in, uh, works for another company. And uh, she says cybersecurity is very sought after. Yes, it's such a, it's, I think the last time we checked, it was projected 
um, growth in that job was over like 35%. Mm -hmm. um, and something that's unique about Embry-Riddle with our niche is that aviation and aerospace are relatively established fields, um, but they're ever evolving and they're ever changing, which is great for our students and our programs. Um, but with cybersecurity and global security, those are relatively newer types of fields that have only been around for 20 years or so. Mm -hmm. um, so there's lots of potential there for our students in a variety of fields. Almost every company nowadays has a cyber intel aspect to it. Um, you know, I always like to tell prospective students, how long were you on your phone today? You were on your phone a lot. Um, you know, we're paying for things on our phone. We're doing everything technological and the security measures are going to need to be in place to protect us from those things. Yeah, I was listening to, I think it was NPR, and they were talking about like um, uh, ransom attacks yeah. <laughs> on hospitals, you oh, know, gosh. which is terrifying. Um, so yeah, so good, good place to go. Um, so let's talk about the kind of student that's going to be really best suited mm -hmm. for this type of school, because it is, I love these niche colleges, but I think what's very important is to find the right student. For the right student, they're amazing, mm -hmm. but you want to find the right one. So who do you think is best suited for it? Yeah, so the best students for Embry-Riddle are students who are obviously interested in our realm of aviation, aerospace, you know, security and intelligence. Um, but our when I think of our student body and what describes them, I think of focused and I think of driven. Um, they're just, they're motivated. You know, when I, I tell families my job as an admissions counselor is easy because I don't have the students that are undecided when they submit their application. They've known that they've had an interest in being a pilot or they've had an interest in astronomy since they were young. And that interest has kind of propelled them forward and motivated them throughout their, their time in school. Um, but students who are obviously, since we are STEM university, math and science oriented is a big deal for us. Um, but we also like to see just well-rounded students. In our admissions process, we don't just look at the GPA or the test scores, but we try to see extracurricular activities. We try to see um, perhaps, you know, they're in the first robotics team at school or they're um, even if they're in the marching band or they play a sport, all of those, you know, those characteristics tell us something about the student. So we're looking for a, a well-rounded individual um, who's probably driven and motivated to come here and to achieve their goals and then go out into the industry upon graduation. Mm -hmm. Is there any kind of necessity that a student um, have any exposure to the airline or aeronautics industry? I mean, I imagine no. that's challenging to do, but that's the kind of student I get a lot. Like I have to do something that's related. Yeah. You know? So we actually, we, we jokingly say, we'll teach you how to spell airplane to how to land an airplane here at Embry-Riddle. Mm -hmm. um, so you don't have to have any experience. Like we will teach, you know, students from the ground up in any of their degree programs. Um, whether it's engineering or flight or or anything else that we offer. It gives you a little bit of an edge, you know, I'll be honest, if you have some flight experience before coming here, um, but it's not necessary. Right. Under, not everybody can afford that. Not Correct. everybody can do that uh, without yes. being part of a college. So, yeah. all right. And is there um, is there a student who shouldn't attend? I mean, you may have already answered this question, but let's, I just want to throw yeah. that out there too. Yeah, so I mean, students that probably shouldn't attend would be the ones that are undecided. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we are a private institution, so we're a little bit more costly. Um, there's that that you want to take into consideration. So if you're just kind of looking for an experience to find yourself, I, I wouldn't necessarily say come to Embry-Riddle. You know, mm -hmm. if you have a general interest in our niche, then yeah, maybe I'm sure you could come here and you could find something that would align. But if you're just kind of winging it and not really sure what you're going to do, um, this might not be the best institution for that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So because of your niche institution, I'm guessing that you're somewhat self-selective, right? So you don't have like the huge numbers of like mm -hmm. maybe uh, like an Ivy or, or right. even like a University of Michigan. That's my guess. Mm -hmm. But I still, these are very tough majors. So I think it's probably still very tough to get in. Yeah. Um, so mm -hmm. let's talk about kind of like, like, do students have to have calculus or is it at least very helpful? Like, what are some of the key things that you look for that mm -hmm. you're like, would really be uneasy about admitting a student if they didn't have these things? Yeah. So the biggest um, degree programs where that would come into play with would be within our College of Engineering, um, because the engineers are going to have a calculus class every year. Um, and then they're going to have a physics course every year. So we want to, at the very least, make sure that those students 
took at least pre-calculus in high school and a, a high school level chemistry, preferably physics course. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that way they get here and they're kind of ready for the next step. They're not going to bite off more than they can chew. Um, for any of our other degree programs, surprisingly, you don't have to know a lot of math to be a pilot. Um, so the at least Algebra 2 in high school, if you can take pre-calculus, that's just going to prepare you even more. Um, but where the, the biggest preparation comes into play is for those engineering programs. Mm -hmm. How about computer science? How I mean, at computer science or the computer science related fields that you have mm -hmm. at most institutions, those are skyrocketing in selectivity. They might even be more mm -hmm. selective than engineering. Mm -hmm. Kind of curious how that works at your institution. Yeah. So for us, we're not anticipating. We're not experiencing that yet. Where we're seeing the biggest growth is in the students that want to be the pilots and the aerospace engineers. Okay. Um, so, you know, those programs are becoming more selective in our admissions process. Um, it, but those are really the only two ones right now. Okay. So computer science students, here's an opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a school that's well regarded for STEM and uh, like maybe this is a program that's not impossible to get into. So that's mm -hmm. great. Um, so tell me a little bit, like we have just maybe a couple minutes left. So tell me a little bit about campus life. I mean, these mm -hmm. institutions are so different. They're smaller. They're very intense. You know, the students who attend, I think, are probably super passionate about the field. So it's going to feel a little different from like your raw, raw kind of right. traditional campus. So let's talk about that a little. Yeah. So um, that's a great question. I love this campus because I love um our students are so active on both of our residential campuses. So something that's so special about our university is because of our niche and our shared interest, every student on campus kind of has that commonality. You know, they all like space or they all like stars or rockets or, or airplanes or um, CSI type stuff. And because of that commonality, there's a lot of shared interest and there's lots of it's easy for our students to make friends. And I can kind of attest to this because I went to this university, I went to this campus specifically um, when I did my undergraduate degree. And um, you just find people who like the same kind of nerdy things that you do when you're here at Ember Riddle. Mm -hmm. And we've got, you know, over 200 clubs and organizations at both of our residential campuses. And those are professional organizations to kind of advance you and look good on your resume. There's fraternities and sororities. We've got intercollegiate athletic teams, we've got intramural sports, um, and then we have just fun, silly clubs. You know, there's been a Harry Potter club, there's been a Nerf club. Mm -hmm. um, out here in Arizona, we're in a very outdoorsy type of community. So there's a kayak club, there's a hiking club, um, there's lots of great things. You know, I'm sure there's a surf club at our Daytona Beach campus. Mm -hmm. um, there's just lots of great things to do outside of the classroom and that commonality kind of ties our students together. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I always, I, um, I love that you called it nerdy. I personally think nerd is a compliment. Who I agree, the world? I, I absolutely mean, Bill agree. Bill Gates, big nerd, big nerd. He's been pretty successful, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so yeah, like embrace the nerd, embrace your inner nerd is something that I tell students and that's often how you're gonna get the most out of college. And I think that's so nice for this because the students that are interested in a school like Embry-Riddle in these types of fields, they are the nerdy ones, you know, and maybe in high school or growing up, they felt a little different because of that, but then they come here and they're with their people and we just see them kind of flourish, which is really unique. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Great. Any last things like any, anything that I haven't asked that you're like, oh, they have to know this about Embry-Riddle. If not, um, that's okay, but yeah. You know, I would just add that we're so much more than aviation and aerospace and lots of people don't realize that, you know, and we provide a great learning environment with hands-on opportunities to come get a degree and have some fun and get a, a, the full-on college experience and then go be successful upon graduation. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Great. All right, Liz, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. All right. So we're going to be taking a break now, but when we return, I'll be talking with Joy Brown of George Fox College. Mm -hmm. 